All right, physics people, here we go. Uh, we're looking at uh, an example where we have interacting objects. And um, so Newton's third law is definitely coming into play here. And we're, we're going to take it a step further, and we're going to actually look at the sum of forces that are acting on at least one of these objects. Let's see how far we can get. We're going to have a situation, and this will be similar to what we have discussed in class already. We have um, a stack of boxes. If you prefer to think of this as layers of a birthday cake, okay, that's cool too. Let's do three boxes this time. Uh, we're going to have box number one, box number two, and box number three. And each of these boxes will have different masses. Mass of box one, let's call that, uh, let's give it a mass of two kilograms. Just because. Mass of box two, that's going to be, uh, let's go five kilograms. Mass of box three. Let's give him a mass of eight kilograms. Okay, no problem there. Easy enough. Now, uh, I'm going to focus on just one of these. I'm going to look at uh, box number two all by itself at first. So that will be my system. So if I redraw box number two, and there, box one was above it. Not really going to draw it there anymore. Box number two, uh, three was below it, and not really going to draw that. I'm worried about just looking at forces. Okay, so uh, I've got box number one pushing down. The downward force here. I've got um, box number three down here. It's, there's a contact force. There's pushing up. And I also have the weight of box two itself pulling down. So I can look at those uh, and just kind of figure out well, what's going on here. What is, what is actually happening? Um, I also can recognize something that box number two is not accelerating anywhere. That's going to be very important to realize. If it's not accelerating, then the net force acting on box two will also be zero. Okay, so what's happening here? Um, there is, ah, yeah, yeah. Draw a straight axis here for you. There we go. Free body diagram. This is our y-axis, our x-axis. Cool. I have two downward forces and one upward force. So I can simply say, well, what if the uh, Downward weight is about there, force of gravity. The downward force of um, box one, this is a contact force. It's, a, it's basically a normal force. It's just acting in the downward direction. So I also have that guy here. And kind of got lost in my diagram. I'm sorry about that. Uh, this is the force of box one on two. Okay, there is also an upward force. This is another normal force here, but it's caused by box three. And what I know about this upward force is that it has to totally cancel all of the downward forces. So I need to draw this guy a little extra long. And this is the force of box three on box two. Force of weight. Force of box one on box two, both those pushing down. And force of box three pushing up on box two. Okay, well how about this? Now I'm going to do the, uh, the sum of forces. I'm going to realize that net force is the same thing as sum of forces. And I only have to worry about forces in the y direction here. There are no forces in the horizontal direction at all. Not, not in this particular situation. And I already know that the net force is zero, so the sum of forces is also going to equal zero. Okay, that's handy. But what are the forces I am adding up? When I sum things together, I'm adding them. So I'm gonna look at forces in the positive direction first. That's this guy, force of three on two. Force of box three on box two. Then I have two forces that are in the negative direction. Since they're in the negative direction, I'm actually going to subtract instead of add. 
and that's okay. Subtracting is just like adding the negative. So here we go. Um, taking away force of one on two. And taking away force of gravity. And when I do that, the answer should be zero. All right. It's kind of a common thing here to say, well, what if I want to know how large that force is? How hard is box number three pushing up on box number two? So in my sum of forces equation, I'm simply going to isolate that guy. Three on two. And when I uh, have to isolate it, I'm basically going to add this force and add this force to both sides of the equal sign. And when I add it to this side, everything cancels. When I add those two forces to this side, well, I get those two forces that are positive now. Force of one and two, and force of gravity. Cool. Well, force of gravity on box two, that is equivalent to mass of two times g, right? So I can make that substitution here. Three on two. One on two plus mass two times g. Excellent. And I know mass two, and I know the value of g. And so I have half of the, the problem here. I need to know the force of one on two. Okay, I need to know the size of this force right here. How hard will box one push down on box two? Well, it can only push down on box two with its own weight. That force right there is the force of gravity of box one. And that's going to be equal to mass of box one times g. How about that? So I can take this and do a substitution right there. So I get the force of box three on box two. Remember, that's the one I'm looking for. And instead of writing this, I'm going to write m1 times g. And now I have m2 plus m2 times g. And I know m1, I know m2, I know what g is. Um, if you really like, if you, if you prefer, you can actually factor out g and you write it once. And you have m1 plus m2 equals this upward force of box 3 on box two. Three on two. So when I plug some numbers in to my handy dandy calculator, here it is. I'm gonna have M1 plus M2. That's gonna be two kilograms plus five kilograms. That gives me seven kilograms. And I'm gonna multiply by 9.8. And so I get a value of 68.6. And the units of force are always going to be newtons. So I was just able to find how hard box three is pushing up on box two. Awesome. One last little thing about this. Check this out. I needed to know the size of this force, the size of this upward push right here. If you think about what box three has to do, it's pushing up on the total weight of both boxes one and two, isn't it? Box three here has to hold up boxes one and box two. So the weight of one and two combined are pushing down and box three is pushing up to counter or to cancel that weight. And it makes sense. So what I did to find the weight of one and two, I simply had to add M1 plus M2 and multiply by G. And that's equivalent to the upward force that three is uh, creating on box two. Two different ways of thinking about this. Uh, you'll find that there's, there's often gonna be um, something like that with these problems that we solve. There's often gonna be uh, just a, a slightly different way of approaching it. And as long as you know, your thinking is correct, your logic is fine, then, uh, then either method is correct. All right, thanks for watching. If you've got questions about this, uh, let me know next time you see me.
Take care.